Hi, it's nice to see you. I wanted to share something. I was, uh, I have a few things actually to talk about. I was driving home. Um, I had another video I had planned to work on today. It's uh, the evolution of Kabbalah, uh, explaining more about what Kabbalah actually entails. It's part of my ongoing series of videos putting together how the Bible may have been written, you know, how it may have been structured and so forth. I covered this in earlier videos, but I was driving home from the grocery store just a few minutes ago and I I thought about uh, something that I, it was a YouTube video I had watched. It was a very fascinating video. It's called The Y Files, uh, or WF for short. And it's simply somebody who explains, typically the paranormal, uh, explains directly to the camera some topic like uh, specific ghost hauntings or uh, the Annabelle, the real story behind Annabelle possessing a doll and uh, UFOs and Roswell and so forth. It's kind of like uh, a TV series that I enjoyed. I have the DVD set over there. I think it's a Canadian release, but it was an American TV show. Uh, it was hosted by Leonard Nimoy of Star Trek fame. It's called In Search Of. That aired in the... Uh, sometime in the late 70s, like 78 into early 82. So he must have been continuing to do that while he was... No, no, no. Uh, Star Trek The Motion Picture came out in 79. So, yeah, that rings with uh, how I remember it. He, he was largely doing In Search Of, and then that was kind of before Star Trek, the, the movie series of Star Trek, really took off. So, anyway, uh, he was talking about how... Uh, there are journalists who are paid by the CIA or in the CIA's pockets, I sort of want to say. So you shouldn't really trust all, it sounds like X-Files, right? Mulder, trust no one, so forth. But he was, he was explaining the evidence behind some people. It was, I think it was about crop circles. That was the main topic. And he was talking about how there are connections subtle growing towards, in some cases, somewhat direct connections to uh, the CIA and government agencies um, that you shouldn't trust. Well, that basically they're disinformation specialists and some of those disinformation specialists carry notebooks and pens and pencils in their ears and they've got the word press on their caps. So um, it's as somebody, somebody who had been fascinated by UFOs and the paranormal in general, Bermuda Triangle and so forth. So I was, I was right there watching In Search Of when it, when it premiered and when I discovered it in syndication on A&E. Um, but before that, way before that, I was already reading books on UFOs and so forth. I was already into the paranormal. Uh, and I, I, I'm still interested, but I've lessened. Anyway, uh, so I'm already familiar with reading about uh, probes and investigations into whether somebody's a, uh, a double agent or something, um, or have ulterior motives. That's why UFO research to me is fascinating because it not only covers geography, it let me learn more about history in general. Uh, it's also just imaginative and evokes the uh, imagination. Uh, but it also encourages critical thinking skills. The better books that I, I gravitated towards encouraged critical thinking skills. So anyway, uh, I had written this screenplay called Cerberus and it was, it was in college. Um, there had been, I've done videos explaining this before and I have, uh, on my Amazon, I think they call it a bookshelf, but um, if you type in my name uh, and I have a link in my videos and in my About Me page in this YouTube channel, I have a link to several of my uh, written materials. Uh, I want to say books, but they're not quite that expansive. One of them is. It's quite expansive. It's a, it, it's a scan library of really a lot of my creative material 
from early childhood going all the way up to about college and and, and beyond that. Um, anyway, uh, the first real the first real screenplay project I had was uh, was called um, it go, goes all the way back. It was about a mermaid. It was about a mermaid that looked more fish-like and then evolved over time um, to become more human in a relationship with somebody. Um, I forget the name of it right now, but it's in that book. Uh, then my second was when I actually entered into college and it was on my own. Uh, actually, uh, no, 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 it wasn't actually on my own. It was it was for a college course, but it was to, uh, to do with UFOs. So it was right up my alley. And we just, in the course, screenwriting course, we basically just wrote and wrote and wrote outside of class. And he may have, I don't remember what the, he was a very good teacher. Um, he basically taught us some things about characters and so forth. I Things that I had already known, but... I do remember us reviewing material because I remember the other classmates being impressed and, and smiling when they talked about it. Um, so there must have been some sharing of, uh, of our work. Anyway, the title was Cerberus and I had several different um, types of characters all searching for this downed UFO uh, uh, craft. I was going to say flying saucer, but... Um, downed alien craft. Uh, and one of them, well, blah, 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 blah. Um, I won't go into the details, but there are several different kinds of characters, the aliens themselves, private investigator, contactee cult, so forth. Um, this would add a new wrinkle. I thought, I sort of wish that I had put in this idea of don't trust the press or there could be disinformation specialists. I'm kind of surprised that I didn't do that. It was enough, I guess, at the time to crank out something, a story itself. So, um, and I had done it in the vein of those 1950s movies, partic particularly Earth vs. the Flying Saucers. Uh, came, uh, I think it was 1956. Um, good film. Uh, so, as I was driving home the grocery store, it occurred to me that I should take that script and improve it because it is interesting. I mean, if they can come out with Independence Day and other movies like that, why can't I go back and revise the screenplay and, and improve it? Um, and that just saying that now reminds me of these other projects I've been focusing on one for quite a while. It was a, a kind of a crush, starstruck crush tribute to Madonna. And uh, I've been saying, talking about the project for a while on this channel. But I do have other project ideas. And I've been think, thinking yesterday, uh, Saturday, of the other TV projects the projects I had in my mind, I had fleshed out quite a bit for TV series uh, that never, I was never in a position, I have not yet been in a position to develop them into fully formed um, you know, TV viewing, uh, actually produce them. I wasn't in a position to know somebody who could produce them. And that, I guess, dovetail, dovetails, where my speech? That dovetails into uh, another thing I wanted to talk about. See, I'm glancing over. I'm improving. I'm improving on my channel. Uh, and that's something I also wanted to cover. I'm improving on my channel by having this notes application to the side where it lists some topics. It's a cheat sheet. So I'm not looking down or saying, um, ah, uh, so many times. Uh, so... I covered that. I I feel like I feel pretty good that my life path is flowing forward, and these different things that I want to do in my life 
are gelling together. Uh, yesterday, I had been writing, I'd been, I guess I shouldn't say writing, I was learning co about music composition and I was doing a lot of planning. I want to, there's a venue downtown and I've wanted to go and sing music, sing my own music, but I haven't composed the music yet. I have a list of different songs. In fact, I came up with I, uh, three albums. Not all the songs are in the albums, but I had uh, thought of three album topics and then some songs that would go into each album. Um, they'd probably be something like 11 songs or 11 tracks per album. And I'd been thinking about creating a separate YouTube channel for that and creating a separate uh, email address and social media. And not only that, but developing um, a, 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 I don't want to, a manual is about the best way I can put it. It's not a manual. It's, it's a, an action plan. I'll call it an action plan from now on mentioning uh, promotion plans and publicity information like a short bio. They say like a, about a hundred word bio. I'm not sure if that's a long one or the short version, but, uh, and how to pose for publicity photos and so forth. So, um, so I, there's a cosplay thing that I really enjoy doing. I've, I'm proud of having developed, you know, this something like two years since I started it. And I enjoy doing that. I, I can feel the benefits of writing music. You know, it takes a long time to write a screenplay, but perhaps I can do the cosplay and do the music gelled together. And it gives me an opportunity, if I go to these venues, it gives me an opportunity to put on this persona and uh, perform in front of an audience and get that experience. And maybe somebody will notice me and, and things will go from there. So in some sense, that's what I mean by life gelling together. And I should say that in terms of advice, uh, I've always, since childhood, I've always, especially, especially in childhood, I've always just gone with, this is a bit of introspection on myself, I've always gone with my passions. You know, when I was in school, school was more structured and outside of school, I didn't have as many, as much responsibility, as many different obligations as I do now. So I, I watched TV and I enjoyed film and I wrote stories and drew artwork and so forth. I was a, a good graphic, uh, I don't know if you want to call it graphic artist, but, um, if you, I was a realistic drawer, <laughs> is what I would call myself that, uh, back then, that young. Um, I could draw very well uh, at a much higher level in terms of dimension. And I would just, here's a tidbit on how I did it. I would just look, I, I guess I'm innately talented in picking out relative uh, positions of objects, uh, spatial relative, spatial relativism. Uh, so I would look at what I wanted to draw and I would pick out some part of it, uh, maybe some part where a lot of the different uh, aspects, a lot of the different objects in the scene uh, touched each other. And uh, from my point of view, and I would just start there and I would work my way out and I would have a good sense of straight lines and, and angled lines and so forth. I would just branch out. So that's how, that's my tip. That's how I did it. Um, and I drew a lot of Transformers, which are these robots. You might already know what Transformers are. Um, those are primarily what I drew. Uh, and Star Trek uh, photographs. I, I would copy photographs. Um, so I was very artistic and very good visual eye. So I can't remember where I was going with that, but 
I want to demonstrate, uh, oh, 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 inspiration. Oh, right, so the passion. So I would simply do that in my childhood growing up. And then I had to get a job after college and it put us, it, it, it made me put more emphasis on getting a job and getting a better job and so forth and so on that the writing remained. I mean, I, it's almost like it was planned. Um, my first, my um, mermaid script that I was talking about started somewhere in, it was 1993, it was August 1993. So it was during the summer before senior year of high school. And then, uh, then in college, I worked up to 1997, which was some year, I was in a five year, all year round um, schedule for college. So somewhere in there, 1997 was when I wrote Cerberus. And then after that, I wrote a James Bond spoof or a parody or two. And then I worked up to this Madonna project. And then that's been my focus in terms of screenwriting. I did come up with about that same time, I did collect together these thoughts in my mind of different TV shows, and I kept that going for a while. But the main focus was on that Madonna project, and I hadn't really been writing other things script-wise. So that's another reason why I want to get into writing music, because um, you can express yourself very well through music and you can demonstrate like I want to perform on stage and it's difficult really <laughs> to be able to perform a whole play if you're only one person and, and that's I think one of the things that has inhibited me all this time It's because I focused on the screenwriting which is all in your mind and you can't really can't really perform it. Um, I've been thinking about this. I think about saying what I'm going to say, but thinking about and thinking about for a long time. I look back and, you know, there were talent shows in elementary school. Let's go back to elementary school. Uh, what did people usually do on stage? Like sometimes there's a magic trick. A lot of times there, there are people who sang and I couldn't do that. I couldn't put what was in my mind, these visuals of storytelling on stage. In fact, I remember there was one talent show. It was probably fifth or sixth, fourth, fifth or sixth grade because I remember what school I was going to. And they, there was nothing in there. I was in um, chorus in, um, in middle school and they had, they put on some plays and um, I didn't do anything like that in high school at all. Um, even though privately, I, I knew that they put on plays, but I wasn't geared towards that. I was geared toward writing film and developing film. And to me, film was much more intricate than a stage play. A film, you have camera angles. See, I was already thinking directorially at that young age, I was thinking film and story structure, and I wasn't necessarily thinking about story structure. Innately, I knew act one, act two, act three. Later on, I would learn a lot more about story structure, and, and a lot of that thanks to Dramatica, which came about 12 years after college graduation. Uh, but anyway, there were these opportunities where young kids, could sing and work on their singing ability, but I couldn't develop uh, my story writing ability and share it with other people without ha because I was only one person. So I did, it's not like I hadn't written poetry before. Um, I remember in early elementary school, we were given a class assignment to write, I think it was a poem, about 
a color and I pick transparent, identifying the lack of color, meaning you can transparent, you can see through trans and then parent, you can see through what it appears, it appears to go through. Um, I argued that that lack of a color was a color in and of itself, and I got a bit of a praise for that on the paper, but I, I believe it was a poem um, I had written on that, and then um, I didn't really write more poetry. I did write something. I did in senior, I think it was senior year or junior year of high school, I wrote about, um, I wrote a poem about um, the stars and we shot for the stars at one point and we never went back. And it was written kind of in a malaise tone. Other than that, nothing really comes to mind in terms of poetry. Um, I keep looking at myself in the preview. I've got to not do that. I've got to look directly at you. Okay, I'm looking at you. Um, you there. Uh, in senior year, in the second semester, um, I want to impress somebody. So I wrote a series of poems and then for a certain reason, I stopped the end of senior year. And so if the person's out there listening uh, or watching this, um, I'm continuing. I'm not only continuing to continuing with the poetry and not letting it stop me, but I'm, I'm learning about music composition and I'm going to put those ideas and thoughts into song composition, composition, going to try and, you know, in Empire Strikes Back, Yoda says, there's do or do not, there's no try. I'm going to write song, some songs and I'm going to develop that into something. So I'm looking up here at the list here of what I had. I guess that, that basically covers what I want to talk about. Um, it's gelling together. I have all these thoughts about what um, I, uh, my, my side hustle that I envision. I'm planning it well. I wanted to go in and I shared this with a few of my friends. Uh, I'm learning about song composition. I plan to just go in and put on a persona and sing my own work. But that takes a lot of effort. Um, so I'm not abandoning it. I'm thinking realistically. I'm thinking that I could write poetry. I'm more accustomed and more practiced in writing poetry. I'm just learning music composition now and I'm developing my singing voice. I feel like I'm a physicist, or I, I want to be a physicist that doesn't have much of a math background, which is sort of what I am too, but that's another story. I, I plan to go to book this event and develop my overall appearance and my gimmick and uh, meanwhile make more of that action plan. Meanwhile, work on my singing voice and work on how to write music better. So uh, that's it for today. I'll probably, this being a weekend, it's actually an unusual Sunday. I have the day off. Usually I, I, I've been working two part-time jobs and usually on Sunday afternoon from 3 to 8 p.m., I have that second job I go to, but today I have the day off. Tomorrow I have the day off. So uh, completely, both jobs. So I may not do another video until later on this week, but chances are it'll be uh, about dramatic, uh, dramatic, it'll be about the history of Kabbalah. And that gives me a, enough time to learn more and take notes on Kabbalah. So that will probably be my next video. So I hope you stay tuned for that and I'll see you next time. Bye.